Jerry Cooper, Shelley Winters, Henry Morgan. Star on Family Theater. The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theater Incorporated, presents Throw Your Heart in the Ring, starring Shelley Winters and Henry Morgan. Brief portions are transcribed. Gary Cooper is your host. You know, there's a certain kind of picture that always makes me feel good, whether I see it in an advertisement or in real life. It's the picture of a boy and girl running to meet their father when he comes home from work. You know what's going to happen. He'll have to relive their day with them. Listen to all the good and unusual and happy things. Sympathize with all the bumps and bruises and tears. Well, that's the way it should be. That's what fathers are for. But children aren't the only ones who need help and encouragement at the end of a day. Everyone in the family needs a listening ear, a sympathetic father. And that's what God is for. God is our father. He wants to help us. He wants us to talk to him. In other words, he wants us to pray to him. Families that want to be happy turn to God each day in family prayer. They realize that the family that prays together always stays together. Gary Cooper returns to bring you another message after our family theater story, Throw Your Heart in the Ring, starring Miss Shelley Winters and Mr. Henry Morgan. As the West End Transit bus made its way across town to Jasper Street and the end of the line, Maggie Monahan sat up front as usual, talking to the driver. You know, Lloyd, after all these years, it's occurred to me that we're breaking the rules. You could get fired. Hmm? What do you mean? Well, all the way across town, we sit here and talk, and that sign up there says, any unnecessary conversation with the driver of this vehicle is forbidden by law. <laughs> Oh, that old thing. Well, don't you worry, Maggie. You're the steadiest customer this line has got. <laughs> and besides, conversation with this driver is not unnecessary. I get bored. Well, just the same. It is a rule, and... and don't you ever break the rules, Maggie? Not me. In my job, you only break a rule once. Well, you will, Maggie. You will. What do you mean? Oh, some guy will come along and... Uh, the only thing to make a girl like you break the rules is a guy. And uh, if it's the right guy, you'll break everyone in the book. Don't be so sure about that. First Street! First Street! Hey, uh... Hey, Maggie, how come that you're a nice... How come? Yeah. Why? Uh, because I, I like it. It's a wonderful profession. At least it is for me. Mm-hmm. But uh, w wouldn't wouldn't you rather have a better kind of a job than you got? You know, a private nurse to some old millionaire, or or say maybe even a regular hospital job. Nope. I like my job. Yeah, but it uh, seems to me it'd be a lot better and easier than working for the city tramping around the streets all day, taking care of a lot of bums, and, and don't think they appreciate it neither, because they don't. Maybe they do, some of them. Eh, I don't think so. And, and, and what a beat you got. Jasper Street District. I was born on Jasper Street, Lloyd. You were? Oh, well, how about that? Look, Lloyd, you're married, aren't you? Sure, you said it. Do you love your wife? Of course, sure I love her. You'd probably do most anything for her, wouldn't you? Oh, well, sure I would. Well, that's how I feel about my job. You do, huh? <laughs> I wish I felt that way about this bus. Jasper Street, end of the line! <laughs> Sammy's got the whooping cough, Mrs. Gersel, and it could be your fault. I told you four months ago he should have shots for it. Now, 
Now, you listen to me, Mr. Franklin. I happen to know you have a very good income from this place, and I also know the Board of Health says you've got to put screens in the windows, and you darn be- well better have them up the next time I check in, or you'll be checking out. You'll have a fine baby, Mrs. Lofrano, if you'll just follow that diet and rest as much as you can. I'll be back to check on you next week. Your husband's doing fine, Mrs. Hagen. He'll be back at the job soon. So many people with this flu now. Don't I know it. Glad you didn't catch it, Tommy. Oh, I'm rugged. Uh, wouldn't you stay and, and, and maybe have a bit of supper with us, Miss Monaghan? Thanks ever so much, Mrs. Hagen. But I've got to drop my reports off on the way home. Office closes at 6. Uh, maybe some other time, huh? Oh, I hope so. Um, Miss Monaghan? Yes, Tommy? Uh... I'll walk to the bus with you, okay? Sure, if you can walk fast. Miss Monaghan, I... What's on your mind, Tommy? Well, it's something I'm not supposed to tell, but but I think I'd better, maybe. There's a man, awful sick. What man? I don't know. He's up in Mr. Polk's hotel. I think you better go up and see about him. I can't, Tommy. I'm through for the day. I'm late as it is. He's awful sick. Well, why doesn't Mr. Polk call a doctor for him? That's just it. The man won't let him. He doesn't want anybody to know he's sick. I think he's in trouble. What do you mean? Maybe he's done something. How do you know so much about him, Tommy? Well, I run errands for Mr. Polk, and I found out. Now, you won't tell that I told about it, will you? Of course not. And you'll go see about him, won't you? Well... He's awful uh... sick. Oh, I guess these reports can wait until the morning. And uh, you want to keep that record clean, don't you, Mr. Polk? Oh, yes, ma'am. Keep it clean. Good hotel, good record. Mr. Polk, I have a hunch there's somebody sick in this hotel. Somebody? Oh, this is a bad hunch, Miss Monaghan. No, it's a good hunch. Where is he? He... Oh, there, there's nobody sick here. Uh, who told you? Then he is here. Uh, there is a man, yes, but this man is not exactly sick. He, when a man is sick, he says, I am sick. This man says he is not sick. I'd better have a look at him, Mr. Polk. But, please, he just wants to be let alone. I promised him I would... Well, he's a good tenant, pays his bills, he's quiet. Where is he? Number 205. And from here, I wash my hands of the whole thing. That's a good idea, Mr. Polk. Hello? Mind if I come in? Who are you? Uh, Maggie Monaghan. What? What do you want? I- I'm a nurse. Oh, you look like you could use a nurse. Get out of here, will you? In just a minute. You're, you're pretty sick, aren't you? Who sent you here? You better lie down and take it easy. I, I want you to get out of here. Well, as long as you're sitting up, I'll fix that pillow for you. Uh, Mr. Polk isn't keeping you very comfortable, is he? He sends you here? Okay, you can lie back now. If, if you don't get out of here... Well, I... I'll just have to push you back. Oh. Oh. There. Oh. See how weak you are? You're a big, strong guy, too. Being sick is twice as hard on, on a big, strong guy like you. Let me alone. You want to lie here and die? It's my privilege. And it's my privilege to see that you don't. Besides, you're too young to die. Here, open your mouth. Under your tongue, please. That's fine. Now, I want you to get something straight. No one sent me here. Exactly. Uh, I heard there was someone sick up here, and, well, that's my business, whether you like it or not. Oh, look, Miss... Please be still. You've lost a lot of weight, haven't you? Bet you haven't eaten anything for days. I'll uh, hang these clothes up here for you. Mr. Polk doesn't take very good care of me. Here, give me that. I'm afraid it's a... A gun wouldn't be the best thing for you right now. I'll, I'll just put it in your coat pocket. You know, this is a very nice suit. Doesn't look like it came from Jasper Street. Uh, that's not your business. You're right, it isn't. I'm a nurse, not a policeman. I'll take that thermometer now. 
Oh, go away. Go away. Have you got any money? Yes. I'll have Mr. Polk get some things for you. All right. Now, will you please get out? Just as soon as you answer a couple of questions. What's your name? Who wants to know? I'm a city nurse. I have to report my cases to the health department. They have to have a... Look, look, you're not making any, any report. But I have to. It's a rule. Well, you'll, you'll have to break the rule. But I... You, you know, I, I could look through your clothes. I could probably find something with your name on it. You, you wouldn't do that? No, I guess I wouldn't. Well, I'll tell Mr. Polk what to bring you, and I want to get that fever down. And uh, be sure he gets food three times a day. Uh, well, but who's going to run my hotel? No, 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 I, I can't do this. You'll do it. Now, let me see the register. Uh, register? Yeah. He did sign the register, didn't he? Why, sure, sure. Good hotel here. Everybody signs the register. Yeah. Right here. His name. That's what I thought. Jones. You don't think this is his name? Do you? I'll see you tomorrow, Mr. Polk. <laughs> Come on, Maggie, you're late. I, I, I was in the drugstore. I had to call the head nurse about some reports. I was supposed to take them in this morning and forgot. Mm-hmm. Broke a rule, huh? Well, not exactly. I don't know that you'd call it that. Hmm, must be something going on with you. What are you talking about? You remember what I uh, told you the other day, Maggie? The only thing to make a girl like you break a rule is a guy. And if it's the right guy, you'll break every one in the book. Tell me something, Lloyd. Hmm? How does a girl know when a guy is the right guy? Hmm, well, uh, not being a gal, I, <laughs> I can't answer that. Uh, but, but, but I can give you the reverse opinion. The first day I set eyes on my wife, it was just like old Clancy Lower in the boob. Oh, I'll never forget that day. She was about to... Hey, what do you want to know for? Uh, it, just curious. Yeah? Yeah, and, and watch where you're driving, will you? Oh, so help me, I think you got yourself a boyfriend. You're thinking all wrong, Lloyd. Yeah, well, if you ask me, that is too bad. A dame like you ought to have a boyfriend. Nobody asked you. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, look, Lloyd, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to chop your head off. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> Skip it, I, I had it coming. No. You see, Lloyd... When I was a little kid, I made up my mind of something. Yeah? I was going to get out of this district. I was going to make something of myself, something decent and respectable. It wasn't easy because I didn't have anything to start with except a strong back and a lot of hope. But I got what I wanted, this uniform. I want to keep on wearing it and working hard. I want to be the best nurse I know how to be. I haven't got time for love. I'll get off the soapbox now. Oh, no, no, no. That's okay. That was a nice speech. <laughs> Only one thing wrong with it, that, uh, that routine about love. It don't take time to fall in love with someone, Maggie. All it takes is a heart. Just a minute. I'm in a hurry, Mr. Paul. Oh, uh, Miss Monahan, something I found out. I'm worried. This man has a gun. I know it. Y you know it? Yes. Uh, how did you find out? Well, and so what? Well, with everything going on like it is, I... I've... Everything going on like what? This killer in the papers. Maybe it could be that fellow... Killer? You mean you think... Oh, don't be silly. Well, Just because he has a gun? He has. Well, maybe... Maybe he's a policeman. May a policeman? In my hotel. No, no, no. I don't... Now, take it easy, Mr. Polk. I I'm going up. I'll ask him about it. <laughs> and...
And whether you like it or not, you are getting better. The fever's gone. Yeah, I, I'm afraid I'm going to live. You don't seem to care about it, do you? No, I guess I don't. How can you say a thing like that? How can you even think it? It's easy. It's easy, and it's wrong. Lay off, will you? No, I won't. I'm telling you right now, you're wasting your time. It doesn't take time. All it takes... Yeah. Uh, Go on. <laughs> um, has Mr. Polk been treating you all right? Uh, bringing you everything you need? Yeah, I guess so. Look, I, I know this isn't any of my business, but, well, Mr. Polk is a little worried about you. He, he knows you're carrying a gun, and he's afraid that... Afraid that what? Yeah, oh, nothing. I, you know something? You need a shave. I, I, I'll bet you're a good-looking guy with that beard off. I'd be glad to give you one. It's part of my training, you know. Look, I can shave. Uh, oh, okay. Um, oh, I don't think I introduced myself properly. Uh, my name is Miss Monaghan. Maggie Monaghan. What's yours? Listen, Maggie Monaghan. You've been good to me, darn good to me. Why you've wasted your time, I don't know, but it's a lost cause, so give it up. I don't like to give up. Sometimes you have to. You mean like you? Yeah, I mean like me. Look, won't you please tell me who you are? Just tell me your name. I haven't got any name. But you gotta have... Why? So you'll have something to put down on your report? I'm sorry, Maggie. I told you not to waste your time on me. Are... Are you running away from something? Trying to hide, maybe? Is that it? Yeah, that's it. That's what I thought. You can give me away if you want. You know, like you said the other day, you can go through my clothes, find out who I am, hand in your report, stick to the rules. I know. Well, go ahead. Why don't you? I don't know. Maybe... Maybe Lloyd was right. Lloyd? Yeah, he's a... He's a bus driver, I know. He knows all about people. Especially people like me. And, and, and the whole thing happened over on State Street. The biggest murder this town has had in years. It, it's real good, Maggie. Well, so anyway, see, the guy was shot right through the head. Shot? And... Uh, shot with a gun? Yeah, Maggie, shot with a gun. What do you usually shoot people with? A gun. Look, Maggie, what's the matter with you anyway? Nothing, Lloyd. I'm, I, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with me lately. Yeah, well, maybe you're in love with something besides that job. Maybe. Face Street! Driver, out here, please. Hey, watch your step now, lady. Now, uh, what, uh, what did you say, Maggie? I didn't say anything. You did so, right before First Street. I said something about maybe you was in love, and you said, uh, maybe. You must be hearing things, Lloyd. Yeah. Well, what do we talk about next, huh? Uh, care to talk about the murder? I said, uh, shall we talk about the murder? Uh, shall we talk about anything? I'm just talking to myself. Oh, well, Jasper Street, end of the line, is right. Who is it? Maggie. Uh, Maggie Monahan. Oh, come on in. You're kind of early, aren't you? You don't usually hit this yard till later in the day. Well, I don't like to, um, uh, to get in a rut. I shaved this morning. Yes, I, I see you did. Uh, you must be feeling a lot better. Well, you, you've been so swell to take care of me, I thought I ought to at least try to look decent. You look just as I knew you would. Um, look, what I wanted to tell you was I won't make out any report on you. Oh, as long as you're all right and it's nothing contagious. Thanks, and... Maggie. I know what that means to you, that report. It's, it's pretty important. No, no, it's not important. Well, um, I suppose you'll be leaving here as soon as you can get on your feet. Leaving? For where? For nowhere. Where can you go to lose yourself? Mr. Polk's hotel's as good a place as any. It's nowhere. Don't talk like that. I'm sorry, I... 
I guess I'm a new type case for you. It's a disease you've probably never seen before. You might confuse it with jaundice because the victim turns yellow, but don't you be confused, Maggie. I haven't got anything as brave as jaundice. I'm just a plain coward. I don't believe it. I wish I didn't, Maggie. Maggie Monahan. That's a good name. Strong as the girl it belongs to. I... Maggie, something's happened to us. Do you know it? Yes. I knew it. How did it happen? Why? So all of a sudden, why'd you come here? It's so wrong for you. You don't know. Don't know what I am. I don't care. I know you don't. You're that kind of a girl. You've got the courage I haven't. Maybe that's the answer. Maybe you're the answer. I want to be. I want to help you, if you'll let me. If I'll let you? How can I make you understand it? Oh, Maggie, it's no good. Not for a girl like you. Be smart. Walk out that door and slam it hard. I can't. Don't be a fool. If I am a fool, I don't know it. And can't help it. I don't care who you are or what you've done or why. I just know that whatever your trouble may be, it's my trouble too, now. No. Get rid of it while you can. I don't want to. It's as simple as that. Maggie. I have to go now. I'll be back. Will you be here? If you want me to be. I want you to be. I don't know whether you wish to converse with me or not. I'm sorry, Lloyd. I just got an awful lot of things on my mind. Yeah? Uh, broken any new rules lately? No. No new ones. Just most of the old ones. Yeah, well, that's the way it goes. Uh, hey, what's new on the killer? What killer? Didn't you read the papers? No, not much, Lloyd. Oh, it's been in the papers for weeks. Seems like you'd know all about it, you working in Jasper Street District. Well, the police think the killer's hiding out somewhere around Jasper Street. They do? They do, Lloyd? Yeah, that's what they say. That's what the papers say. They got him traced right down to Jasper Street, and then when they get there, it's a dead end. And then all the... What's the matter, Maggie? Nothing. Make you nervous knowing there's a killer hiding out on your beat? No, Lloyd, it doesn't make me nervous. Well, don't you let it bother you none, Maggie. They'll get him. Yes, Yes, they will. Sure. Well, here you are, Maggie. Jasper Street, end of the line! Uh, please, Miss Monahan, wait a minute. I want to say something to you. This man, I think maybe we should call the police. Miss Monahan, wait. Wait a minute, please, Miss Monahan. <laughs> Maggie. I don't believe it. I, I can't. You're, you're... Maggie, Maggie. You... What's happened? You killed a man. How did you find out? The papers, everybody. It, it's true. I'm sorry you had to find out that way. I was going to tell you myself. I, I can't believe it. I won't. Not even if you tell it's me. It's true. Oh, I know how you feel. That's what drove me crazy. Trying to believe it, trying to face it, trying to understand it. To explain how a thing like that could happen. But I, I couldn't face it. You don't know what it is to feel like a killer. What, what are you going to do now? That's up to you. You can still walk out that door. No. No, I can't. Not without you. And besides, we couldn't get very far. Mr. Polk's called the police by now. The police? You've got to tell me. Tell me as fast as you can how it happened and why. I don't know why. That's just it. Everybody knows how it happened. I hit him. You, you hit him? And just somehow he, he went down for the count and he didn't get up, ever. I won the fight, Maggie, the, the one I'd trained for all my life, yeah. Jim Harrigan, the winner. That's me. Jim Harrigan? I didn't even hear him say it. All I heard was... Killer Harrigan. And all I saw was that poor guy lying there with a broken neck. 
It finished me. I, I couldn't fight anymore. I, I was afraid to. So I ran away to hide. Scared, scared of myself. I, oh. I went a little nuts, even bought that gun. I don't know what I... And oh. you came along and... Don't cry, Maggie. Please, don't cry. I, I'm not. I'm not really crying. Oh, you don't understand. It, it, it's so crazy. I can go back I... if you'll go with me. Will you go with me, Maggie? Jim. Jim Harrigan. You've got yourself a deal. This is Gary Cooper again. And here's something that always struck me as strange. A man will proudly raise his voice to sing the Star Spangled Banner, and yet he will awkwardly mumble the Lord's Prayer. Some men will work for their family and play with their family, and yet they hesitate to pray with their family. It's not that we're ashamed, it's just that we're, well, kind of embarrassed. I'd say that's a kind of embarrassment that has no sense to it. We need God's help today as we never needed it before, especially if we have a family to raise and protect. If we're honest with ourselves, we know that without God, we can't bring love and tolerance and understanding into our home. And those are the things that we want above anything else. Daily family prayer will help us get them. Yes, let's pray together as a family, proudly and gladly. For the family that prays together stays together. Thank you for being with us, and God bless you. Our grateful thanks to Gary Cooper, Shelley Winters, and Henry Morgan for their appearances, and to Martha Wilkerson for writing our play. Original music was scored and conducted by Max Tare. This production of Family Theater Incorporated was directed by David Young. The supporting cast included Herb Vigran, Sidney Miller, Betty White, and Michael Chapin. Next week, our Family Theater star will be Joan Leslie in Round Trip. Your host will be Pat O'Brien. This series of the Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program and by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need. Be with us next week at the same time when Pat O'Brien, Joan Leslie, will star on Family Theater. Your announcer, Meryl Ross. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>